Okay, thanks for tuning into the channel. I'm going to work on a what I would say is a, a pretty simple application of the stamps. I'm going to stamp out Snowy Brook here, um, and I'm doing it in a dark blue. It's called Prussian blue. You can go with something like a navy blue or whatnot. The Marvy Prussian blue is one of the darker blues that I've seen out there on the market. And I love all things blue and dark blues are some of my favorite colors in general. Okay, now I'm just doing this on a piece of matte piece of paper. Okay, it's kind of thicker. You know, it's not like copy paper or something like that. You know, a decent card size thickness. This is not card stock that I'm working on in terms of the surface. It's card stock in general, but it's only coated on the, uh, the glossy side. But I'm working on the matte side. So any kind of good paper, I would say. Yeah. Something of higher quality, I would say, though, than like a piece of, you know, copy paper or something like that. Something nice and stiff, okay? All right, so we have our image stamped out right here. I'm doing this in a lighter tone because this is going to, or I'm going to try to, give it kind of a, a characteristic of a kind of a, um, a frosty, um, misty winter I don't know what time of day it would be. Well, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. But just kind of a misty kind of winter wonderland, basically, you know. Okay, so this is kind of more of a medium blue, all right? So you can use the same blue if you want to, but how do you get a lighter version of this in terms of your impression? You can just kind of tap it off, which I might do with this one too, okay? Even with the medium blue, if it's a little bit darker than you think you might want, you can always blot it off and then go. But I don't know. Let me try this right here instead. Okay, so what I'm doing is I just have a paper towel. And what I'm doing is I'm wiping it off pretty good right off the bottom, okay? That was about a quarter inch wipe, okay? Let me see if I can get the sound uh, registering here. Okay, now as I move up, I'm using less pressure, so I used most pressure down here. And I'm taking it up as I'm doing that. I'm kind of tapering it, okay? So I'm taking a lot of uh, ink off the bottom, a little bit less, a little less, and less. So it's going from wet to dry down here, but it's transitioning. It's not just going wet, wipe, dry, okay? So right in here, there's a little bit less, okay? And it's not exact, you know, but see, I'm kind of dabbing this around the edges too. Just so I can get a varied impression and what this is going to represent is kind of this, this low-line fog on the uh, surface down here and let's just stamp this right down here or so you can stamp it higher if you stamp it up higher it looks like it's farther off in the distance if you stamp it up down lower it looks like it's closer to us okay now, I don't want to stamp it in the water or something like that but my snowy area here is um, open on the top so it doesn't matter where you do it. Okay, stamped it right down there. This one will stamp up a little bit higher, I think, so it looks like it's more distant, but let's just use that same color here. But watch what I'll do. Let's go like this, stamp it off, okay? You can really get a lot of mileage out of your ink pads this way, okay? And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll wipe this off on the bottom like this. Pretty good. I'm going about this is two inches right here, so I'm probably going about a half, uh, halfway up, one inch, okay? So I'm taking most off the bottom, like a quarter inch, and transitioning up. But remember, this is lighter to begin with because I've already stamped it off. And then let's, let's go higher because things in the distance are typically lighter in terms of um, the, uh, the um, in terms of the light that's reflecting back at us of the image, okay? So you see that it's really quite light. And you can see where it's kind of transitioning up. It's a little bit darker on the top. I probably should have taken off a little bit more off this one. Depends how wet your ink pads are. But you'll see what we do later on where it all just make up for it. I could have kind of expedited, you know, kind of a ladder process that's going to go on with this. All right, now I'm going to make, trying to make this technique and that well this card here really accessible to people okay now normally I would use my um, 
color box stylus tools. It's so much easier. Um, but this is, you know, when I say that's the easiest thing to use, I'm talking about these sponge applicators, okay? This is kind of right behind it, all right? And it's not like this gigantic drop-off. Um, this isn't, I don't know, probably not quite as comfortable in terms of, um, you know, an applicator like this with a handle and whatnot, but let me just show you that you can do this right here. Take off a lot of ink here so that you're not using kind of a sopping wet applicator okay now that's the key a lot of people just that ink it up like this and then they just go like that and that's with all of their different media they're not taking enough ink off so they're not using kind of a lighter touch with um, their applicators and I mean if you're kind of experienced at this and you kind of know what you're doing you know you have the, a good feel of things already you can just ink up and go you know because you can use a lighter touch you know with that but if you're just kind of starting off, I would recommend, I mean, see, I mean, I really wipe that off quite a bit and there's still quite a bit of ink on here. So use kind of a light touch, okay? Now what I'm doing in here is I'm going in and I'm kind of defining my shadows, which in turn will define my lights, okay? Now where do you color something like this? You can see this image right here, the darker areas on the image are the places that I will reiterate with color, okay? Just in general, but what I also like to do a lot of times is I like to make my perimeters a little bit darker as well. So see how I'm kind of bringing this in from the outside edge in? See how I've angled my card like this? And that way this kind of motion right here is really quite comfortable, okay? Kind of just taking this in like this. Yes, my, you know, my paper towel starts to fray a little bit, but who cares? You know, it's not like I'm going to save this forever and need to use it over and over again. This is just a little torn piece of paper towel like this, okay? You can try a cotton ball or you can try any type of soft applicator if you want. Napkin. Kleenex might be a little bit too, too thin and flimsy. I don't know. Okay. I've been doing these uh, matte ones this last uh, week or so. I don't know. Maybe just one or something like that. I've done this before, though, too. But I, I really like the look, you know. I don't know. I've been, I've been kind of tweaking my um, techniques around a little bit and uh, trying some different looks. And this one is going to be predominantly... Um, now, see, this is the first time I've had to re-ink it here and just kind of blot it off again. But um, I've been tweaking my technique a little bit in terms of how much um, ink is used, or certain inks, okay? Now I'm talking about my white pigment ink on uh, something like this. And I'm going to be leaving this in the lighter, kind of a, a lighter value, just in terms of the overall um, value scheme of the piece, which really <laughs> opens up the possibilities for the um, uh, that pigment ink and what you can do with it, kind of the, the leeway you get from it. It's really, really fun. Okay, now here's what I like to do too. At the base of things like trees or things like that, anything sitting in the scene, if it's solid enough, I like to give it a little bit of a shadow base, okay? You can dab around too or something like that. Uh, no, I mean, I'm doing this on the mat, but you can do this on glossy too. I'm kind of doing it on mat because a lot of people have matte paper, okay? Uh, my preference would probably be, probably be glossy, just a little bit more. And, you know, but it makes the um, impressions a little bit more solid. You can do this on a matte cardstock too, and that would be even better than this. This is like a you know, like a third tier down in terms of, you know, uh, paper quality. But I want this to be nice and accessible. But try it on different things and see what you like. See the shadows right down here? I'm going to come in. See, it's easier for me to come in. I, when I'm doing it like this, I can't see that shadow right there very easily right here. So what I do is I just turn this upside down. And see, I can see that where that 
shadow meets that area. See right here. Okay, so just flip your cards around. You don't always have to keep things kind of right side up. See that like that? And right here, there's another shadow right here, so you can kind of work that area. Okay, and see these rocks are a little bit darker. The little stream is darker in there. You can kind of color that in, like so. All right, let's switch up. Let's try some um, other tones here. Here's a uh, like a mem memento summer sky. Let's just use the same applicator. I usually won't don't come in from a darker color to a lighter color, but as we can see, I've like used all, up all of the ink off here. It stained the paper towel, but. Um, and I don't think I'll get a lot of transferring of uh, color from that color to that one because, you know, I just used up so much of it. Okay, so this is just kind of giving a little bit more body to the uh, the piece. I should have started off maybe with Summer Sky starting off with a lighter tone. It's usually a good idea, but, you know, you can kind of go back and forth. I mean, don't start off with, like, black or something like that, and then go back to the memento and put that black into there. But, you know, we're talking about the same hue and roughly about the same value, especially for the fact that I've, you know, used up a lot of it already on the application. Okay, you see that kind of lighting starting to happen in here? It's because it's being defined by the tone around it. Okay, so even if this is a lighter color, than the one that you've already applied, I'm applying it right over the top of the darker one because it's giving it a little bit more body, you know, even the darker one. I can't see where this, you know, the summer sky isn't really standing out just kind of in its purest form of that color when I go over the darker one, but it's kind of filling it in a little bit, okay? So what's the difference between coloring and coloring and shading and lighting. It just means that you leave some areas light. Don't color in, oh, okay, that's snow. Color in everything, okay? Leave certain areas. And what areas those are? You know, it's up to you. But the easiest thing is to just do a vignette around something. And the darker areas on the image, you just color them in. You add a little bit more color to them. And if you get some in some areas that you didn't intend, don't worry about it. You know, it's no big deal. See this right here? That lighting on those two little areas? Well, how do you define lighting? You just you leave it, you know? I mean, but if I left this area light and this area is a little bit darker, is it wrong? No. It just means that you're saying that the light is hitting over there. All right, so there's tons and tons of variation, and none of it is incorrect, you know, as they say. I think a lot of people think about it like it might be incorrect to do certain things a certain way, but it's really not. Not in terms of something like this. I mean, where's lighting hitting? Who knows, you know. Um, there could be other trees somewhere, kind of out of the scene. Who knows where the lighting is, you know, within the, you know, this given piece. It's all for you to just define, okay? And whatever you say goes, you're like a kind of a, a set designer for a play, too. You know, what do you want your viewer to look at, you know? Um, you can put a spotlight here and there. Wherever you want people to look. If you have kind of some subject over there and subject over here, then leave those two areas light so that you have kind of this um, idea of those areas being spotlit and you're directing your eye wherever you want it to go. Okay. All right, so that is that. I mean, this is not, you know, some kind of real elaborate scene right here. Uh, this is really getting frayed, but that's a pretty cheap applicator though, isn't it? All right, now a lot of you have things like um, alcohol pens, or you have um, water uh, color markers, you know, the dual tip ones, the Tombos, Laplumes, etc. You can use those. 
go with a light blue. That's a real similar blue to something like the summer sky, right? But what are pens good for? They're good for kind of getting in to little areas. And what am I coloring? I'm coloring in kind of some areas that are already dark. And I'm what am I doing? I'm just reiterating it. But see, I left some of the little river light like that. Okay, so you don't have to say, okay, this is water. Let's color all of it in blue. You could. But what I do is I like to kind of reiterate the lighting scheme within the river that already exists, okay? That means I'm just kind of shading in the shadows, okay? The things that are darker in there. All right, here's some rocks, right? I mean, if I want to, I can kind of add a little bit of shadow to those rocks like this, right? And see, this is what's really good about um, your pens. They can get into these little detailed areas really nicely. the shadows underneath the uh, trees. A little bit more of the vignette right here. I mean, this is not hard stuff. Oh, this is a cheap uh, shuttle art pen. It's a little bit of a brighter blue, right? These pens you can get for about 40 cents each in packs, sets, which really makes for kind of a nice, you know, you can supplement kind of your nicer pens or more uh, costly ones. They're probably a little nicer in terms of the tip. This one doesn't have a brush tip, which I real I like the brush tips, like, like on little plumes or things like uh, Copics or whatever, but um, it's not bad. These ones right here, 88 pens for $40. Um, this one has to be shuttle art again. I've since come to, for our school art program, uh, my son's school, and tried the shuttle art sharpie markers sharpie style you know the permanent black pens and those work fantastic one third the price okay anyway hitting those little areas so things in here are getting a little bit more defined you can see my shadows along the bank right there and whatnot okay let's try a little bit of a different hue let's see Something like this. I, I usually like to stay fairly light um, with these ones. Light values, okay? Like that one's kind of a little bit more earthy. This one, a little bit more of a, uh, like a purplish tinge to it, right? Let's try this right here. Kind of hitting that area. Just coloring, but it's coloring with the idea of lighting so you don't color everything, okay? Hit your shadow areas. Right there. I'll color that rock right there. The blues, when you work in blues, you tend to kind of give things a more kind of a coolish um, tinge, right? Which is kind of appropriate for kind of depicting um, winter, you know? I mean, I could have stamped all this in black too. It just gives it a little bit of a different feel. And then you can color it in, you know, with your. Um, color, you know, bluer tones or whatever. Okay, let's try this one right here. It's a little bit of a violet tinge, you know. It'll kind of introduce a little bit of a slight change in hue. You can kind of play around with, you know, just pull out all of your, you know, blue pens and put them right in front of you if you want to. All right, so I think that has been fairly fleshed out, you know, in terms of the snowy bank, right? Look at that as it passes back there into the lightness but I really like the soft lighting down here. I can do this thing. I don't know, I might stamp it out several times and it, you know, it'll look different. Um, each one of them would look different um, from one another, which is kind of the beauty of rubber stamping and scenic stamping and all the variation that can happen within a piece, no matter how many times you do it. And uh, that's what I'm always looking for. So even if I am going for, you know, if I someone 
sometimes when I go to it, like a stamp convention someone will say hey you know I didn't see that you know I'll be kind of finishing up on a scene and they'll say hey how did you do that I just I just got here and yeah I wanted to see how you did that last scene and I'll you know I'll certainly try to accommodate them but I'll usually try to alter it a little bit anyway but even if I did try for duplication you know with the different variations that come out things will come out a little bit differently every time all right now here's one of my little tips right here for doing things in snow or grasses right this is a deer as you can see you can see that ground it's standing on right but if this is supposed to be snow and i did this in another video too i mean i can mask off the snow or something like that but a lot of times what i like to do is i just wipe off the bottom here quite a bit now the more you wipe off the deeper the snow you know it's supposed to be right so I'll just kind of wipe it off like that let's see can you see where I've kind of wiped it off down there you see where it's blacker up there and like that so it might transition slightly right there but I try to give it a pretty crisp kind of wipe off but I think a little bit of that will print out probably which is kind of nice because then it looks like it's kind of going into the snow so as it goes into the snow where the snow and the legs meet there's a little bit more translucency like you can kind of see through some of the snow you know and then it you know maybe down deeper you can't all right now where do I want to put this I think it would work in you know different areas let me put them right here I think kind of putting them off off on the corner here maybe looking into the scene or something the lower you have it the closer it is to you you know so kind of by um, um, by reference it'll you know depending on where I stamp this it'll change the size of those rocks if I stamp that deer up here like way up here we're saying that those trees are really quite small you know and short in relation to the, uh, the deer okay so see that right there Isn't that fun okay so I did that one in black of course so things that are oftentimes things that are closer to us represent things that are um, or, or the things that are closer to us we stamp darker okay so the closer it is the darker it is right more distant becomes lighter and the very distant becomes even lighter than that all right um, let's go for a couple other images in here this is the winter brush okay a little bit it has that same type of um, kind of foliage looking thing as that let me do this right here I really like this image right here. I, I should use it more. And it's not just for um, winter scenes. You can do anything. You can have it for spring. Use a couple gel pens on it. And put little, you know, buds coming out of it or whatnot. But look at that right there. Doesn't that add a lot of uh, depth to the scene? Darker, lower. Okay, darker or lower is closer, right? And that's dark. A little bit farther back, lighter impression. Even farther back, lighter, and the farthest back is the lightest. All of this could be stamped in black too. It would kind of just bring everything a little bit more forward, okay? But you can use value to create depth within a scene, and that's really, really fun to do. And it's easy to do. You just kind of blot it off or use lighter colors for the things that are farther back of the distance, okay? And you just stamp things that are farther back higher up in your composition usually okay pigment ink one of the fun things about using kind of lighter tones like this and not going on with too much color which I love to do I'm kind of putting the brakes on it um, consciously is that it really gives me an opportunity to do a lot of things with white pigment ink and I love white pigment ink it was always kind of more of an embellishment than kind of a real dominant medium within my scenes but they always stood out a lot from a textural standpoint but now it becomes really an integral um, medium okay now I can't see it over 
very much over a very light thing. If I did this like white on white, you can't see it at all. So white on light, you can't see it too much either. But let's show you where this kind of starts coming into play, okay? See this darker tree right here? I put this, some of this and build it up slowly, okay? All of your pads are probably really super juicy, so be careful that you're not blobbing everything, okay? And see that right there? See that tree start to change? You know, we have this fog and lighting coming in front of this now, or around it. See that right there? How it kind of really, it's altering it now, right? Look at the change in this th uh, impression from here to here. See that? And you can kind of, you can put it around. You don't have to put it over everything. Don't tone everything out like that, you know, like an eraser or something like that. But, I mean, you could. But look at these rocks back here, okay? Let's make them more distant, okay? Let's take this and put that tone right over the top of them. Doesn't it look like it's farther back now? It's because it's supposed to be like in fog. And that light hitting those objects back there has a longer way to go to get to your eye. So in between, there's the diffraction, everything taking place, and that image of light, you know, that light is getting broken up of that image, okay? So there's things in the air, in other words. It has a lot more moisture to go through by the time that light hits that and gets back to us. So making it lighter kind of makes more sense, you know? in this type of a uh, thing, uh, format. Like I said, if I stamped everything in black, maybe this wouldn't look so good. It doesn't make as much sense, but kind of playing around with it like that. Look at that kind of frosty look and kind of, it's kind of creating kind of a passageway of light too. I've never had this kind of freedom with the um, white pigment. I'm kind of usually dabbing around. I'm usually using a, a cotton ball. I'm not having to be fussy around it or something like that. But when things are lighter like this, and I don't color it in quite so much, and I leave more of the white, it really gives me a lot more kind of... Watch this around the, the, the buck right here. Not buck, but all right, whatever. Deer, whatever. But... Um, uh, putting it down like that. Now, doesn't it look like it's standing in that same mist like that? Isn't that fun? Doesn't what you're doing is you're enveloping things with um, moisture, fog. When we use something like that, that's what we're saying is happening within the piece, and that kind of envelopment kind of lends itself to this feeling of. Um, kind of a tactile um, environment, you know, within the piece. It's not suddenly only visual. It, there's a certain kinesthetic quality to the visuals. Things are being enveloped, and they're being enveloped by moisture, and that moisture is illuminated, so you have this kind of illuminated light surrounding all of these different objects. That being said, when you do these types of things like this, when you run common colors over things, and you run, I mean, this isn't color, but white textures and media over different elements within a piece, different stamps, different distances, what we're doing is we're creating this continuity between all of these different elements, okay? So if I bring some of this pigment ink right here in front of this, you know, deer right here, and it's also way in the background, you're creating this common, um, um, okay, it's kind of a, like a needle and thread um, kind of a element running through those things from the most distant to the closest right down there. And it brings real, real continuity to the piece. Look at that passage of light there. And again, this is just on, you know, a cheap side of the the paper too i'm not even working on really good paper here but it just comes to show you kind of what you can do i didn't think it looked great you know um when i stamped it out and colored it i mean it looked okay and i was you know it was just a simple little coloring around the edge but i 
what, for me, this thing is really coming together with the use of this pigment ink right here. And it's, I don't know, it's almost like erasing certain things. That's what, it, that's almost what it kind of looks like. I mean, this is an additive process. I'm not removing things. But isn't it coming together a lot right now? Look at this tree right here. How beautiful that tree is and how that lighting is coming into it. So, um, <laughs> this cotton ball... I didn't used to use cotton balls either. It was always a little, you know, Q-tip or something like that, which has cotton at the end of it, but I didn't put this much down. So much fun. But look at that lighting that's kind of coming around. And the more you put down, the lighter it becomes, the more illuminated it gets. Um, that's where I said if I kind of stamped out some of these images lighter to begin with, then I wouldn't have to kind of tone them out quite so much. But you just let your eye be the judge of it. It's really easy to get carried away here. But in this type of instance, you know, I can get pretty carried away if I want to. Okay. See, this is what it looks like right here. This is what it looks like here. I'll kind of dab this down. Do you see that right there? It's not like you're putting, like, that amount, okay? You're just kind of dabbing, all right? So that you have a lot of control over how much you apply, right? It's just a light dab. A lot of times you're going to go like this. I can't see anything. And then you're going to press real hard, and it's like, oh, I got a big blob of it. But don't do that. Just kind of allow it to develop. You want it to where kind of you start seeing things with a fifth or sixth or even tenth kind of dab because then things are getting uh, kind of applying in a nice slow manner which means that you have a lot of control over the application um, rate of your media and that's where I'm not talking about this is what yeah when people are doing this for the first time you know a lot of times it's like you know, when we're coloring in, you know, that little, it's like there's so little, so they go hard, you know, or something like that. But don't do that, you know, just kind of let it develop. And things will come together very controlled for you, and you'll, you know, you won't have to kind of go back in and uh, redo something. Okay, so let me go get my uh, white paint pen, and we'll put in some finishing touches on this, and I think it should be. Okay, this is a Meow Sun acrylic painter. There's a, a million of these types of pens out there, acrylic um, paint pens. I have a feeling they're all by the same manufacturer, but just kind of branded differently. But uh, I don't know, I'm opening up another one because my son was using my other one, so I figured these come in like ten packs. They're so cheap. They can't. They don't want to sell just one because they're just uh, they're so cheap. They wouldn't make anything out of it, so they sell them in like ten packs. I don't know. Uh, there might be a five pack. I think there's some different color ones as well, but you kind of just depress this point right here just to get it flowing right here. And yeah, here it comes. Oh, you shake it up too. It has that little ball inside. It's kind of like those old metallic pens, silver, gold. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that or not. Okay, so um, highlights. Okay. You, I explained where you add shadows, you just add shadows where there are shadows in the design, right? And you add in a little bit of extra color. We did it with both our paper towel and uh, um, pens, okay? Highlights. Highlights are just on the top surfaces of things usually, okay? So you see where this ridge right here meets the sh shading, okay? There's shading right here. But then here's this ridge. I'm just going in and I'm adding some extra little kind of highlighting right on the top sides of things, okay? So here's some little snow on the top of this rock. See these rocks right here? These little mounds. It's kind of where light meets dark. I have this kind of oscillation going throughout my designs where light meets dark. It's not just drawing the form, you have to kind of know where to um, oscillate things so that you have a varied surface and that adds to into a richer kind of design element, okay? So, and it's also, I do that so that when we come down to certain things like that, if we want to, we have the opportunity to do these other types of effects within the designs, okay? 
So you always want to have designs that give you the opportunity if you want to do something. You don't want to have to kind of muscle it. So that is always one of those considerations that I'm thinking about um, when I'm designing the stamps to begin with. Okay. So these little areas down here, these little rocks in here, I put shade down there, but where I have the tops of the rocks, I have the tops of the rocks meeting shadow so that it gives us a good opportunity for things like these touches right here. These little touches like this, I mean, we don't have to do, but it's one of those things that, um, as an illustrator, when I was doing like freelance illustration, you always want kind of your, the recipient or the viewer of your pieces, if you can get them to kind of stop and uh, if you can get their attention for a couple seconds extra, that's really good. That's, you know, when I'm talking about freelance illustration, if someone's kind of flipping through a magazine really quickly, if you can get them to stop for a couple seconds, that's good. But where it applies to what we're doing in stamping, you know, when you give a card to someone, you know, they might get the card and if they kind of enjoy it kind of on a deeper level, they'll kind of observe it closer. And that's where things like these little touches can really um, reward them for that further inspection of your piece. It's like, oh, they can really notice some little different things. Okay, so see down here in the water where I've added those top little highlights to things. It's not as visible here. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, you can kind of see it if I kind of angle this a little bit more. You see this little ridge right here where it light meets shadow? Here, I'll make it a little bit more visible. I can kind of come up here and add that to it, okay? Like about like that. Doesn't that look like snow or something like that right there? And these little branches down here kind of in the, uh, kind of the, the little um, intersection of branches, kind of remember to think of the word. Um, I can put little bits of snow, you kind of tend to collect right in the, uh, those intersections. And on, on some of the branches, it could be, it could be snow, it could be ice that's just kind of built up, but um, snow or ice. Um, gives a, is, creates a real reflective quality. You know, to you know, on every single branch, I wouldn't, but um, kind of makes those seem a little bit more three dimensional. Okay, let me see if I can focus here. See that icy branches like that. And what I did was I flipped it upside down. It's easier for me to do this little check mark like that. You know you know, a tapered kind of mark like that. Then for me to go like that or something. Okay, so let's take a look here. I don't know if this will show up at all. You put some of these little highlights in some of the tree branches and we should be done here. I'll call this one Winter Passage. It can be uh, kind of interpreted in many different ways. Maybe it's the passage of water, maybe the deer, or something like that. But the way that I read this one is it's a real passage of light. Doesn't it look like the light is coming from the, you know, the background and kind of coming through this way? Because I think that's a, this piece is about when we look at this, the things that we'll notice first are the deer, okay, for sure. But I think the spirit of this piece is really more about the the lighting in the the uh, the scene than anything. It's not really so much about the creek, the deer, the trees. I mean, those all play a role for sure, you know, for sure. But isn't it this overall kind of lighting in here that's kind of really creates the spirit and sets the tone for um, kind of what the scene is about. Okay, now sometimes the pigment ink, well, not sometimes, but I would think all the time, the pigment inks dry a little bit darker, meaning they become more transparent. You know, they start translucent 
and there's still translucent but I'm going to put a little bit more of this to really kind of get that idea of lighting kind of streaming through here okay so here I've put a pretty big dollop of it down there and let's really create that kind of passage of light through here how's that look does that look nice and misty and kind of winter wonder I'll put a little bit on the back side of the uh, deer when I do that doesn't it make the deer look a little bit more three-dimensional it's not so flat is it I always put a little bit of dimension in the animals you know so they're not just straight silhouette um, and then we can reiterate it a little bit more with something like pigment ink okay so here we go like that I think that looks pretty interesting from a lighting perspective I think easy scene paper towels cotton balls okay a little maybe what was that th three or three colors you can even just color only with your alcohol pens if you want to too you can just put it out there go with kind of your lighter values of it but the dominant medium in this one in my opinion was the white pigment ink and that's what kind of leaving it a little bit more basic allows us to add a lot of that into it okay if it gets too dark that really stands out but leaving it kind of in the mid-tones and lighter tones for the most part really allows for a, a really extensive application of white over the top of it because there wasn't so much contrast in the darker tones to begin with but the darkest of tones I went over it in these different little areas right in here and look at that lighting see that is the same color blue right that that used to be in the distance there but just toning it out a little bit but see on this side you know that's still fairly dark so I don't want to just tone out everything I mean you could if you want to go for a certain statement but having a little bit of a darker area um, by contrast makes the lighter areas light so kind of oscillate it a little bit more now on this one I kind of went to town you know with that white but it's still fairly light in general and um, there, you know because of the relationship to those medium to darker tones in here but even the darkest of tones received some of that white pigment ink you can see it right there in the transition of that deer or down here in the branches look at this one branch right here how simple it was in terms of a print but then you put a little bit of texture on it with the white paint pen and you lighten up one side of it and doesn't that look a lot more dimensional or three-dimensional than it did when it was just stamped only in black and all it took was a couple dabs of a cotton ball over the top of it and simple you have a much more three-dimensional form and the illusion overall of three-dimensional space you know running back in the distance darker things in the foreground lighter things in the distance making certain areas even lighter with the use of the pigment ink okay so anyways hope you enjoyed this scene i really have fun doing these ones i'm really kind of enjoying my newfound freedom with the application i wouldn't say i'm going to do all scenes like that but the one scenes that i do want to do that way it's there now but i'm using just less coloring which makes for a faster scene too if you want you don't have enough time to uh, do that what do we have right here one two three and four images right there and that makes for a pretty complete composition right there and an easy one too okay so anyways if you have any questions drop me a note in the comment section um thanks for tuning into the channel and i hope you try some of these out you know um using some of that pigment ink with that cotton ball is really a blast and so much fun to kind of watch develop as you do it so Hold it at an arm's distance when you're doing it to get a feel of how things are changing overall as you uh, do it. So, very limited media here, and I think most people have things like this on hand. So, um, I don't know. Experiment around. Let me know how it's going. Okay, thanks again for watching.